This is Trepang, or Trepang 2? Apparently there wasn't a Trepang 1. Everyone seems to be confused about the name of this game. I actually looked it up and it means sea cucumber. Hey, what is meaning cucumber? Cucumbers. But what's not confusing is what this game is trying to be. A spiritual successor to the 2005 horror slash bullet time shooter Fear. Now back in the early 2000s, shortly after the Matrix movie released, tons of games were copying the Matrix with their slow-mo bullet time style mechanics. Max Payne is probably one of the most well-known examples of this, but Fear was another shooter that seemed a bit late to the game, yet still delivered some of the best FPS gameplay of its time. Trepang is attempting to recapture the magic of that game, and in some ways it succeeds. Now, this is a first impressions video, I didn't play all the way through Trepang 2 yet. It was just released on Steam for $30. The trailer and premise were enough to get a purchase from me, as I was a big fan of the original Fear. And Trepang certainly doesn't hide its inspirations. The premise is extremely similar. In Fear, you were part of an elite military unit brought in to deal with paranormal events. Basically, the military's Ghostbusters. And in Trepang, you start the game as part of a private mercenary group that's clearly caught up in some sort of tech war with other organizations researching scary stuff or something. The story is really not a strong point of this game and I didn't read through the intel pamphlets that you pick up in the game cause well I was just too busy shooting stuff in slow motion. Now you begin the game in sort of a weird prison escape sequence and while I want to talk about the good stuff first, well Trepang really front loads the game with a poor introduction. The first level is an ugly maze of claustrophobic poorly lit corridors that got me lost a lot and could be used as a what not to do example for level design. As you make your way past this sequence, you'll gain abilities which are basically slow-mo and go invisible. There's no real explanation or instructions on how to use them, and there also doesn't seem to be much of a narrative as to why you have these abilities. You're a super soldier or something? <laughs> Maybe it's explained in the end of the game, I'm not really sure. But nonetheless, it's kind of a bizarre onboarding experience since you can more or less miss the entire premise of who you are and what you're doing here and why you have abilities. It's also extremely easy to miss the limited gameplay instructions as they briefly appear as little tooltips at the side of your screen. I was supposed to jump and melee open a lock, but I ended up shooting it right away and thus didn't know that there was a jump kick for like the first few hours of the game. And I felt like I was missing so much here that I ended up going and watching some streamers to see how they were playing and each one of them was actually playing the game in different ways which looked like they were just unaware of some of the basic mechanics that the game simply failed to teach them. It sort of feels like the first level was made before they knew what to do with the rest of the game and just never went back to like create decent onboarding tutorials or something. So if you get past the unfortunate onboarding experience and actually start to figure out how the combat mechanics work, that's when the game becomes quite fun. And once this combat starts, Trepang becomes a bit of a playground, and this is by far the best part of the game. Alternating between cloak and slow-mo to close the distance on your enemies, sliding through them and tossing them into each other, picking up different weapons and grenades and getting creative with how you kill enemies, it's fun. It's a little clunky at times, but it is extremely fun and it reminds me of how much fun Fear was. The enemies aren't too challenging, granted I was playing on hard and there were several difficulties above this, and they do display some fun characteristics, like overly saturating areas with fire, and there's also plenty of enemy chatter, which is kind of fun when they're trying to figure out where you are or throwing insults at you mid-combat. For the most part, they seem like mercenaries that are terrified to be going up against some sort of super soldier for corporate paychecks, I guess? They, they don't seem particularly enthusiastic about their jobs. And sliding into them, watching them fly through the air, blasting someone into bits with a shotgun, there are moments of this game that feel extremely cathartic in the way that, say, Doom feels cathartic. And the soundtrack attempts to hype things up even further, although I don't think it hits quite as successfully as, say, Doom. When you're fighting the game's enemy soldiers who valiantly die for their corporate overlords, the game is at its best. 
best. It's even funny in the intro level when they keep sending in waves of guys who basically die to you. They actually play the comms of them before they come in, basically trying to get out of their situation. Control, this is Sierra 4. Control, uh, Sierra 3 is KIA. Should we still move in there? Please advise. So at least the game kind of makes fun of those sequences in which mindless NPCs seem so willing to throw themselves into your meat grinder. Sadly, everything outside of fighting enemy soldiers is a mediocre to poor experience. The second mission you play starts off pretty fun. You take out a SAM site and then have to progress your way through groups of soldiers. But then the horror part of the game kicks in. Acid barfing zombies come in waves and just mindlessly sprint at you puking and exploding. The gameplay and fun factor takes a huge plummet here as most of your cool abilities don't really count for much or can be utilized in interesting ways. This is mixed together with long sequences of just trying to find your way through empty corridors that all kind of look the same with tons of recycled assets and painfully designed levels. Topped off with some really basic boss fights in which none of your cool abilities or mechanics can be used in effective ways. Like why even add a boss fight at this point? Point. This thing just walks at me and is vulnerable for like a specific sequence where it spits stuff and that's pretty much it. There's nothing to it. It's one of the worst boss fights I've played. It's sort of like the devs felt obligated to do scary stuff because fear did scary stuff, but none of it actually fits in with the gameplay style. And if you really did spend some time with the original fear game, you probably don't remember the scary parts of fear much because they honestly weren't very good parts of the game. The combat was. Fear was just a lot of lame jump scares with the girl from the ring walking around creepily. Then you went back to fighting interesting enemy soldiers using cool technology. Trepang 2 had an opportunity to fix the scary gameplay mechanics of the original fear or even remove them entirely and not bother with the monster stuff. Yet they seem to have doubled down on a bunch of boss fights and horror sequences that just feel like a chore to get through so that you can actually get back to the fun aspect of the game. It's sad because the basic gameplay is the winning formula and instead the devs put a decent amount of effort into making bosses and doing all this other weird offshoot elements to the game. And if the levels didn't have these long maze-like sequences and lame horror elements and boss fights, I could see there being a lot of replayability here. The menu even has a bunch of unlock modifiers like infinite slow-mo and stamina to change up the gameplay once you complete the campaign, which sort of makes me think that they could have gotten a lot more mileage out of approaching this game design as like a roguelike instead of a really poorly strung together mission-based single player. And again, this is my first impressions and I haven't beat the game yet, so it's possible that it gets better in later missions but I did read some other reviews that suggest it probably doesn't. Now, if you never played Fear and this is an all new experience for you, then you might actually enjoy it. The combat is really fun when the game isn't going down its horror path. And really, there aren't too many games that offer a similar type of experience unless you want to go back and play Fear. But to me, Trepang is reimagining a great game from the past with just lesser execution. I'm not sure if I'm actually going to finish Trepang, but I might actually go back and play Fear now. What do you guys think? Have you played Trepang? Am I being too critical? Did you enjoy Fear? Let me know in the comments. And next up, check out this video of BattleBit, a game that took a classic formula and refined it to the essence of what makes it great. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.